One of my favorite genes, actually, I must say, involves good old vitamin D. And um, I know this is quite a, a, quite a sort of well-spoken about gene. Um, so would you like to tell our listeners a little bit about what this is all about? So there are two genes that impact vitamin D. One is a receptor. So receptors are a type of gene that listen out for something. And a vitamin D receptor is listening out for vitamin D. And then when the vitamin D attaches to it, it creates a whole set of events that we would associate with what vitamin D does. Yeah. So bone health, uh, mood, immunity, etc. And it does that by connecting with this gene. So it's a bit like a key in a lock, yeah, basically. And you, to open and to reap all the benefits, you've got to have the right lock. Exactly, exactly. They've got to match. Okay. So if you have a variant on that gene, then maybe the lock's not quite the same shape and you can open it, but it's going to kind of stick and struggle a bit and not be as reliable. Um, so those people need a more reliable supply of vitamin D, like a continuous amount, possibly a higher level. So when we think about vitamin D status, if you have a vitamin D functional test, that tells you what your level is, then for some people, their level needs to be more for that message to keep getting across. Um, so that's an example of one size doesn't fit all. Yeah. Even in terms of if you go to a doctor or a therapist and they do a test for you, then you can interpret that result differently if you also understand how good you are at responding. Right, because I guess this is the thing, the blood test is looking at the key. Yeah. And I guess the genetics is looking at how the code is sort yeah. of working and how well it's it's put together for the actual lock. Exactly. So just thinking in practical terms, let's just say you've got this, this um, variant, if we call it that, on the vitamin D receptor. So that gene, basically the recipe is wrong. So whatever we make is not quite right. Yeah. How could that potentially manifest as symptoms? So any symptom of low vitamin D that you can think of, it's the same thing. It could it could result in the same consequences because it's just the vitamin D isn't getting through. That's the easiest yeah. way to think of it. Um, so people might have uh, even something as extreme as rickets. And in fact, that has, there's a really good example of a TV doctor whose son had rickets and he couldn't believe it. He's like, I'm a doctor mm. and why has my son got this? We have a pretty healthy lifestyle, yeah. but it turned out his son had these gene variants. And so what was a good enough amount for most people just was nowhere near enough for him to be healthy and develop uh, optimally. Wow. That's a great example. Is that Dr. Chester? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. <laughs> That's, a, I mean, it's a great story. And actually, from my experience, rickets is far more common than we're led to believe. And I guess when you factor in, one, the fact that most people are vitamin D deficient anyway, and yeah. for various reasons, whether it be not enough sunlight, too much sunscreen, uh, yeah. you know, not enough source, source from the diet, etc. But then you've also got that other side which really is only now just starting to be spoken about whether, you know, the recipe, the gene is correct to make it, it is becomes a whole other thing. And therefore we can't look at your blood test in isolation, I guess is the message here. Exactly, exactly. And the sooner you know about this, the more proactive you can be about supporting it. So you could go all your life without realising and then in later life, you might have osteoporosis, for yeah. example, be more prone to that. Or you might realize that actually, I've always tended to low mood, never got to the bottom of it. Uh, we had actually a, a business mentor working with us, lovely, lovely woman who had all her life had low mood, immune issues, like allergy type issues, and she also had osteoporosis. She did our tests because everyone who works with us does the tests, but it was her vitamin D receptor. And that was the connector to all of those different wow. symptoms and experiences. 
So she was completely, you know, amazed and obviously wishes she'd known about it earlier. Yeah, wow, amazing. I think we don't, I mean, I know vitamin D now gets a lot more attention than it has ever done, don't yeah. get me wrong, but still probably not enough. And I think it's such a fundamental, you mentioned there the immune system, obviously f f from the perspective of your immune system, it's so key. I often talk about it kind of as the ultimate immune modulator, right? Yeah. It balances the immune system, helps it if it's a bit weak, but also if it's a bit excessive, like you said, maybe an allergy or an autoimmune disease where the body's attacking itself, vitamin yeah. D can just sort of buffer that down and bring it back into balance. So if we think about it practically, if you've got somebody coming in with an autoimmune disease, I mean, we always talk about the importance of vitamin D, right, in terms of autoimmunity. And if your vitamin D levels are not sufficient, that's a big risk factor. Now we're adding on to it that it's not just about your levels, it's about are your levels optimal for you based on your potential genetic variances? Absolutely. And if you know that, then you know that that's an area that you need to pay attention to forever. Yeah. Because it is your genes. So it's not just a temporary situation. It's something that for you is worth that attention, is worth that investment if you're buying supplements or it's worth working out what lifestyle changes are mm -hmm. going to support you for life. Yeah. Um, so that is, you know, it's such a powerful thing to know about. Agreed, agreed.